Agilosaurus has leaf-shaped teeth that were well adapted to their abrasive, plant-based diets. Most surprisingly, the wavy enamel of its teeth and all other ornithopods, presumably to make it more resistant to wear, was previously thought to be exclusive to the hadrosaurs. Its tibia was longer than its femur, which indicates that it was an extremely fast bipedal runner, using its long tail for balance, although it may have walked on all fours when browsing for food. Because it lacks tail-stiffening interwoven bony struts, some paleontologists think it may have been a burrow dweller. Comparisons between the scleral rings of Agilosaurus and modern birds and reptiles suggest that it may have been diurnal, unlike larger herbivorous dinosaurs that were inferred to be cathemeral, active throughout the day at short intervals. Nanosaurus is known from material from all parts of the body, including two good skeletons, although the skull is still poorly known. It was a small animal, with specimens previously assigned to Drinker and Othneolosaurus measuring 2 meters long and weighing 20 to 30 kilograms it was a bipedal dinosaur with short forelimbs and long hind limbs with large processes for muscle attachments. The hands were short and broad with short fingers. The taxon has a complicated taxonomic history, largely the work of Marsh and Peter Galton, involving the genera Laosaurus, Holopus, Othnelia and Othneolosaurus, the latter two now being considered to be synonyms of Nanosaurus. It had historically been classified as a hypsilophodont or fabrosaur, types of generalized small bipedal herbivore, but more recent research has abandoned these groupings as paraphyletic and Nanosaurus is today considered a basal member of Neornithischia. Hypsilophodon, a small herbivorous dinosaur, fed on low-growing vegetation, likely preferring high-quality plant material like young shoots and roots. Its skull structure suggests it had cheeks, aiding in the chewing of food, with self-sharpening teeth designed for processing tough plants. Early paleontologists debated its locomotion, initially proposing it was quadrupedal and possibly arboreal, similar to modern tree kangaroos. However, by 1969, Peter Galton's analysis showed Hypsilophodon was a bipedal runner and the idea of it being arboreal was refuted. Fossil evidence suggests it may have moved in large groups, earning it the nickname Deer of the Mesozoic. The level of parental care remains uncertain, though sexual dimorphism might indicate differences between males and females. Colindodromius was a small dinosaur, measuring 1.5 meters long and weighing about 2 kilograms it had a short head, short forelimbs, long hind limbs, and a long tail, typical of early Neornithischians. Distinguishing features include a lower front ascending branch of the maxilla, a large fenestra maxillaris, and notched jugal bones. Remarkably, Colindodromius had a complex integument with scales and feather-like structures, previously thought to be exclusive to theropods. It had three types of feathers, hair-like filaments, groups of downwards projecting filaments, and unique ribbon-like structures. Additionally, it had three types of scales, including hexagonal and rectangular scales on its lower legs and tail. The discovery of these features added complexity to the understanding of feather evolution in dinosaurs. Parxosaurus was a Thessalosaurid known from the Horseshoe Canyon formation in Alberta. It would have been approximately 2.5 meters long and less than 1 meter tall. It was probably a lighter animal than Thessalosaurus, its close relative, given its different body proportions. It had robust hind limbs and an elongate skull, allowing for it to be a fast runner and low browser like other members of its family. It would have lived alongside many other dinosaurs, such as Albertosaurus, Sauralophus, Ceratopsians, and Trudentids. It would have lived along the western interior seaway and would have been affected by this marine ecosystem in its habitat. It may have used its long toes to walk over mud and clay near the seaway and rivers, and used its arms for burrowing. Thessalosaurus was a heavily built, bipedal dinosaur, measuring 
5 to 4.5 meters in length and weighing 200 to 300 kilograms its skeletal anatomy is well documented, allowing detailed reconstructions of its hip and hind limb muscles. The dinosaur had a prominent ridge along its maxillae and dentaries, suggesting muscular cheeks for holding food while chewing. Thessalosaurus had a mix of premaxillary and leaf-shaped cheek teeth, a long tail braced by ossified tendons, and robust limbs. Although it was likely herbivorous, it may have been slower than other hypsilophodonts due to its heavier build. Recent studies suggest it had a small brain, poor hearing and a strong sense of smell and balance, possibly indicating a semifossorial lifestyle. Its integument remains uncertain, with some evidence of scales but no confirmed feathers. One specimen even showed bone pathology, indicating it had difficulty moving swiftly. Oryctodromius was a small, swift herbivorous dinosaur, measuring about 2 meters in length. Its name, meaning digging runner of the lair, reflects its likely burrowing lifestyle. The discovery of an adult with juveniles in a burrow suggests extended parental care, as the burrow likely served as a safe space to rear young. The burrow, about 2 meters long and 70 centimeters wide, contained disarticulated skeletons, indicating the animals died and decayed within it. Resembling those made by modern hyenas and puffins, the burrow was filled with sand, creating a distinct sandstone formation. It had two turns and smaller tunnels likely created by other animals sharing the space. The size and shape of the burrow matched the adult Oryctodromius, suggesting it was the digger. Wananosaurus is known from a single partial skeleton, including a partial skull roof and lower jaw, a femur and tibia, part of a rib and other fragments. Because it has a flat skull roof with large openings, it has been considered primitive among pachycephalosaurs. Sometimes it has been classified as a member of the now deprecated family Homolocephalidae, now thought to be an unnatural assembly of pachycephalosaurians without domed skulls. Although its remains are from a very small individual, with a femur length of 8 cm and an estimated overall length of about 60 cm, the fused bones in its skull suggest that it was an adult at death. Like other pachycephalosaurians, it was probably herbivorous or omnivorous, feeding close to the ground on a variety of plant matter, and possibly insects as well. With the exception of two species, most pachycephalosaurs lived during the late Cretaceous period, dating between about 85 and 66 million years ago. They are exclusive to the Northern Hemisphere, all of them being found in North America and Asia. They were all bipedal, herbivorous, or maybe omnivorous animals with thick skulls. Skulls can be domed, flat or wedge-shaped depending on the species, and are all heavily ossified. The domes were often surrounded by nodes and spikes. Partial skeletons have been found of several pachycephalosaur species, but to date no complete skeletons have been discovered. Often isolated skull fragments are the only bones that are found. Homolocephale was about 1.8 meters long. Unlike other definitely adult pachycephalosaurs, Though similar to probable juvenile specimens referred to Goyocephale, Homolocephale sported a flat, wedge-shaped skull roof. Nonetheless, the surface of the skull was fairly thickened. It is also noted for having an unusually broad pelvis and some have suggested that the width served to protect vital organs from harm during flank budding. Homolocephale also had rather long legs, indicating a fast-moving gait. Some suggested that flat-headed pachycephalosaurs were just juvenile forms of dome-headed adults, a view also supported by the earlier analysis of Horner and Goodwin in 2009. First described and named in the early 1900, Stegosaurus was a dog-sized small pachycephalosaur that lived in Alberta. Initially just known from its skull domes, 
it was one of the first pachycephalosaurs to be discovered and was very poorly understood until more complete remains were found in the 1920. It was a small bipedal dinosaur with tiny arms, bird-like legs, a speculative coat of fluffy protofeathers over most of its body, and a long tapering tail with speculative bristly quills. It has a large bony dome on its forehead, rimmed with short spikes, and a short snout with a stubby beak. It is uncertain what pachycephalosaurs ate, having very small, ridged teeth they could not have chewed tough, fibrous plants as effectively as other dinosaurs of the same period. It is assumed that their sharp, serrated teeth were ideally suited for a mixed diet of leaves, seeds, fruit and insects. Stegosaurus may have had an entirely herbivorous diet, as the tooth crowns were similar to those of iguanid lizards. Acrotholus is known for its thickened dome-shaped skull, formed by fused frontal and parietal bones. The purpose of this dome has led to two main hypotheses, one suggests it served as a visual display for sexual selection or species recognition, though this theory is questioned due to the energy required for such a structure. The more widely accepted hypothesis proposes that the dome was used as a weapon in intraspecies combat. Evidence supporting this includes pathologies found in related species like Pachycephalosaurus, where skull lesions suggest injuries from headbutting. Comparisons with modern headbutting mammals reveal similar dome structures and protective features. Additionally, pathologies in modern archosaurs, such as ostriches and crocodiles, align with those seen in pachycephalosaurs, supporting the combat theory. Tylocephale was average sized for a pachycephalosaur, reaching 2 meters in length and 40 kilograms in body mass. The skull is triangular in back view, the widest point being at the jugals with an apex at the top of the dome. Tylocephale's dome is the tallest known from a pachycephalosaur. This dome is also unusually thick and rugose on its exterior. Behind the dome, an array of spikes, nodes and tubercules protrude posteriorly over the neck. The eyebrow ridge was ornamented with small, bony nodules and was thicker than in other genera. It has been suggested that Tylocephale differed from Stegosaurus by having a back-and-forth jaw motion instead of up-and-down. This propylinal motion would shift food back-and-forth in the mouth. The sediments of the formation where it has been found were deposited in alluvial plain, lacustrine and aeolian paleoenvironments, under relatively arid to semi-arid climates. Adult Prinocephale measured 2 meters in length. Unlike the flattened wedge-shaped skull of Homolocephale, the head of Prinocephale was rounded and sloping. The dome had a row of small bony spikes and bumps. Like some other pachycephalosaurs, it is known only from skulls and a few other small bones. For this reason, reconstructions usually depict Prinocephale as sharing the basic body plan common to all of the other pachycephalosauria a stout body with a short, thick neck, short forelimbs and tall hind legs. As with most of its relatives, scientists do not yet know what these dinosaurs ate. However, the premaxillary teeth and muzzle are not as wide-set as in its relative Stegosaurus, indicating different feeding preferences, possibly that Prinocephale was a more selective forager. Some scientists suggest that it may have been an omnivore, eating both plants and insects. However, most experts agree that it browsed on leaves and fruit. Spherotholus is a poorly known genus that, for some reason, has three species assigned to it. Goodwinny from the Kirtland Formation of New Mexico, Buchholzi and Edmontonens from the Hell Creek Formation of Montana. The genus lived for a long time, had a widespread distribution, and yet we don't know much more about it other than it was an average-sized pachycephalosaurid and had a round domed skull. However, it differs from all other pachycephalosaurids were known in the possession of a parietosquamosal bar that decreases in depth laterally as seen in caudal view and is bordered by a single row of nodes and one lateroventral corner node. Spherotholus is considered a highly derived pachycephalosaur. Alaskasophale lived alongside many other dinosaurs during latest interval of the Campanian stage. 
Having resided at an estimated 80 to 85 degrees North Paleo latitude, the area Alaskasophale thrived and experienced climatic extremes unlike that experienced by most other dinosaurs. The temperature of this northern environment would have ranged from around 10 to 12 degrees Celsius during the warmer months and about under 0 degrees during the colder months. As well as this, the environment would have faced 120 days of continuous low-light conditions during the winter. In contrast to the contemporary large herbivores Edmontosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus, which preferred coastal lowland and upland environments respectively, Nanoxaurus appears to have been fairly ubiquitous throughout the Prince Creek landscape. Much like their frilled relatives Pachycephalosaurus had beaks at the tips of their snouts and large gut cavities for digesting plant matter, but they also had surprisingly sharp theropod-like teeth in front of their more standard herbivore teeth further back, suggesting they may also have been opportunistic omnivores, occasionally snacking on carrion or small animals similarly to modern pigs or bears. Their striking-looking dome heads were probably used for combat, head-butting or flank-butting each other, and many fossil skulls show evidence of injuries that would have been caused by that sort of behavior. Pachycephalosaurus was one of the largest of its kind, reaching lengths of around 4.5 meters, and was characterized by a large bony dome head surrounded by small blunt spikes. Recent discoveries of juvenile Pachycephalosaurus skulls confirmed a hypothesis proposed a few years earlier, these dinosaurs changed appearance drastically as they grew up, and younger individuals had been mistaken for separate species. They started off with domeless flat heads, bristling with long spikes, a form previously named Dracorex, then as they matured their domes began to grow, previously stigmatic, and by full maturity they had big domes with the spikes shrunk down to smaller stubbier knobs. <laughs>